Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2020. I don't know what to call it, tutorial video? I I'm not sure what to call this, but you guys really seem to enjoy my video on how to how to play Paris Trap. So, in response to that, I'm going to go ahead and be teaching you guys how to play another type of team that I really enjoy playing, being Sand Offense. Now, excuse me if the microphone level is a little bit low for this video. I'm actually back home, so I'm using this, this little microphone stand right here uh instead of my microphone arm uh i'm gonna be back here for about two weeks so bear with me while i get settled down and yeah also thank you for helping me reach 6,000 subscribers if you guys want to help me reach 10,000 or 7,000 whichever comes next 7,000 comes next but you know uh go ahead and leave a like subscribe do whatever and join the discord in the description down below but let's go ahead and get into it guys uh if you enjoy this leave a like whatever but um i actually have here with me a another folder where I'm going to be showing you guys different things about sand teams. So first off, the first thing you'll need in sand is your sand setter. So we have a couple of options here. Some of them are really interesting actually. I think Hippowdon has some viability this year uh, that's left undiscovered. But as for sand setters, we have Tyranitar, Gigalith, Sandaconda, Sandaconda G Max, which is just Sandaconda, and Hippowdon. So Tyranitar is the most common right now. It's very high up on the usage stats charts. Um, it's the most common sand setter next to Excadrill. Uh, and for good reason. It's got a decent um, speed stat. I mean, when you account for the fact that it gets Dragon Dance. Uh, it has amazing bulk. 100 HP, 110 defense, and 100 special defense. Only boosted by the fact that it's a rock type in sand. It also has amazing physical attack at 134. And some pretty decent special attack at 95. Um, access to Sandstream along with Dragon Dance means it's very easy for it to soak up hits because it's got that 1.5 special defense in the sand uh, instead of Dragon Dances in your opponent's face. If you give it a Lumberry, uh, you can actually eat a Will-O-Wisp for free, which is really, really cool. It's one of my favorite ways to run it. So you can run a very straightforward Jolly Dragon Dance set. I would say that this is the best sand setter this season. Um, but other options, we have Gigalith. This also gets Sandstream. Uh, so because it's a rock type, once again, it does get that 1.5 special defense boost. And I figured that one of the best ways to run Gigalith this year would be as a defensive Pokemon with Body Press, Rock Slide, Protect, Wide Guard. You could also drop Wide Guard for some other thing like Iron Head or Super Power, but uh, I believe Body Press is the best of all these sets because it raises the, or because it's based on your defense step. You could even run like Curse as your last move because that raises your defense and attack. So Body Press and Rock Slide would both get boosted. Um, but the reason that I feel like this might not be the best Sand Setter next to Excadrill is because well, while Tyranitar does share that weakness in ground type moves, um, Gigalith has a harder time taking those ground type moves because it doesn't have the option of setting up and outspeeding the Pokemon and then KOing it. It just has to eat the hit and deal with it afterwards. So. It's, it's a little bit harder for it to take hits, in my opinion, uh, because of that. It doesn't have the luxury of being faster like Tyranitar. But Gigalith is still very interesting, especially with access to body press. I feel like it could have some potential. Sandaconda is a little bit of a strange one. You could actually run it as a secondary sand setter. I wouldn't recommend running it as your primary sand setter for a sand offense team. And that's because it doesn't set up sand automatically. It has the ability sand spit, so if it gets hit, then it's going to set up the sand. It also has some pretty decent uh, defensive bulk, it's or physically defensive bulk, 72 HP with 125 defense, and 70 special defense isn't, you know, the best, but on the physical side, it's perfectly fine. 107 attack is pretty strange, I don't know why they gave it 107 specifically, but it's a usable attack stat. Access to Drill Run, Protect, and Glare makes it a very, very usable Pokemon. Glare is great for speed control, you can paralyze ground types with it because it's a normal type attack, and it'll have their speed and even give you the chance to, and even make it so they have a chance not to move at all. So that's really, really cool. Rock Slide is a very nice move to run on this Pokemon, just so you have an option hitting things like Charizard. But you could also run Coil to increase your accuracy with your drill runs, because they do have a chance to miss, and boost your attack and defense, making you all the more bulky. So, yeah, as a secondary sand setter, I would recommend this. Definitely not as a primary. G-Max Sandaconda is pretty much the same thing, but you have the option to trap. If you want to check out a G-Max Sandaconda team, check out my Paris Trap video that I posted the other day. A link's going to be up above. 
Uh, and finally, we have Hippowdon, which could be one of the coolest sand setters this year uh, because it has access to Stomping Tantrum and Body Press, along with an amazing defense stat. 108 HP, 118 defense. When you compare it to the other Pokemon, 85 HP, uh, 130 defense, and 100 HP, 110 defense, it's definitely one of the bulkier ones. And because of that, and the fact that it doesn't share ground weakness with Excadrill, just that water type weakness, makes it very, very cool. Along with that, you can run Slack Off to... Uh, allow yourself to restore some HP, and you could even roar to deal with things like Belly Drum, Snorlax, force them out after they decide to go for the Belly Drum. Body Press is also a great way to deal with opposing Excadrill and Tyranitar since you hard wall them with your ground typing uh, and your amazing physical defense. And it even is a nice check to Ferrothorn with this defense stat, I believe you're able to two-shot it. So that is a really nice sand setter. I don't know why people aren't using it right now. Um, it could be with the prevalence of Whimsicott and Dracovish, but I feel like it's a really solid sand setter. So overall, I feel like in vi in terms of viability, it would go like this. Let me move you up here. Tyranitar, Hippowdon, Gigalith, Sandaconda. That's the order. You could run Sandaconda as a secondary sand setter, but yeah, I, I feel like Tyranitar is your best bet no matter what. So those are the sand setters. Uh, next up, I want to talk about, of course, Excadrill. Excadrill is the one that benefits from the sand. And there are a couple of things that you need to know about Excadrill. Um, you always need it on a sand team. There are like no other good sand rush Pokemon. And the only two other sand rush Pokemon uh, have yet to have sand rush released. They're the fossil Pokemon being uh, Dracovish and what's that Pokemon called? The uh, Dracozolt. So they don't really benefit too much from sand you could always run a choice scarf set uh but yeah the first that i want to talk about with excadrill is this weakness policy set i went over it in a previous video going in depth all about excadrill uh weakness policy when you dynamax will allow you to take a uh, a max quake from opposing excadrill and if you run something like screens or intimidate it makes it even easier for excadrill to take hits and on top of that after you take that hit you get plus two in your attack making stomping tantrum an absolute nuke uh, making your max quakes an absolute nuke and because you're a max pokemon uh, you can go for things like uh, max quake and max uh, steel spike to uh, allow you to raise your defensive stats making it even easier for you to take hits and it even boosts the defensive stats of your partner pokemon like hippowdon like dracovish like tyranitar uh, so it is one of the better sets in my opinion next up we have a choice band set this is just something that you could run because Dragapult only hits 213 speed max. I say only as if it's low, but it hits 213 speed max, so you can run an adamant set and outspeed under the sand, KOing a lot of Pokemon with uh, your very powerful Iron Heads coming out from that 135 base attack with an adamant nature. Stomping Tantrum, Rock Slide, and Earthquake, uh, so you have an option for spread moves. You could run something different though, you could run a Poison Jab uh, to deal with Grass types, but I feel like Earthquake's your best bet. Next up, we have the Life Orb set. A lot of these look very similar. Like these next two are pretty much the same set. Life Orb and Focus Edge both run Jolly, Max Speed, Max Attack, for Defense, with Iron Head, Stomping Tantrum, Protect, Rock Slide. Really, just it's very standard Excadrill. The reason you run Rock Slide on Excadrill is because it has a chance to flinch your opponent, especially since you're going so fast. You have more opportunities to flinch uh, both of your opponent's Pokemon. But yeah, uh, it's really just your choice of any one of these sets. It's very team dependent. I wouldn't recommend running Choice Ban Excadrill on a team that doesn't have um, like Intimidate users because you're going to have to make a lot of defensive switches to change up your moves. So if you don't have an Intimidate Pokemon, don't bring Choice Ban Excadrill. You're going to need to bring it in to switch it. You're going to need to switch up your moves and probably bring in that Intimidate Pokemon to eat a hit from opposing Excadrill or something. So yeah, those are your Excadrill sets. Uh, I... You know, it's all very team dependent. And I will give an example team at the end of the video and a couple of replays that I got with it. Next up uh, is the fire types. Now, fire types are very important to sand teams. They aren't necessarily required, but they're very, very smart to run. Uh, the reason being is Ferrothorn and opposing Excadrill do not enjoy fire types. Uh, and on top of that, Pokemon like Rotom Heat being fire type, being able to eat the steel type attacks, uh, as well as... Being able to switch in on ground type moves because they can levitate is very, very cool. Uh, and you're able to Will-O-Wisp opposing hyper-offensive teams. So, yeah, your options are pretty much Arcanine, Rotom Heat, and Colossal. Colossal being the least viable and Arcanine probably being the most viable. Arcanine is an Intimidate Pokemon. It has pretty decent bulk. You could run Flare Blitz, Protect, Will-O-Wisp, and Snarl. 
So that's really nice. Um, it's really just a very bulky Pokemon. You could run it with like a Choice Band if you wanted, though. I personally would recommend the Will-O-Wisp set, though. Uh, next up, we have Rotom Heat. It's usually best ran very fast. Timid, max speed, max special attack, 4 HP. Uh, Will-O-Wisp, Overheat, Volt Switch will prevent you from getting trapped, and it's a nice way of hitting Grunt. Or it's a nice way of hitting water types that will give sand teams a little bit of uh, problems. On top of that, it's got some pretty decent bulk. So after a Will-O-Wisp, it's pretty hard to knock out with a physical attacker. And Overheat's nice for hitting uh, Ferrothorn and opposing Steel types. So yeah, uh, finally we have Colossal, which benefits the most from the sand technically. It doesn't take any sand damage and it gets that 1.5 special defense. But the issue with Colossal is that it's very underwhelming uh, on the physical and special attack side. It's more of a defensive Pokemon unless you're running a weakness policy set. And it, this is more of a support Pokemon on these sort of teams. will is protect Rock Slide with Flame Body. Makes it pretty easy for you to uh, deal with things like Ferrothorn and uh, even opposing Arcanine. Arcanine can be an issue for Excadrill, so this guy switches in on him pretty easily. And, you know, Will-O-Wisp is just very nice. Along with that Flame Body, if anyone tries to go for a physical attack onto this thing or like a fake out, they have a chance to get burned, so that's really, really cool. But yeah, those are the fire types that you could be running on these teams. Um, there are a couple of other really good options. Of course, we didn't go over a full team. So some Pokemon that just fit very well on the Sand teams, I'll go over those and explain why. Wimsgat's very, very good in this season, with the immediate benefits of Tailwind uh, being introduced into the game. Uh, it's one of the best Tailwind setters because of that Prankster. Non-damaging moves will always go first. The Focus Sash will allow it to live any one hit. Moonblast is nice coverage for hitting Dragon types as well as Dark types. Uh, and Encore is really nice for uh, if you find an opposing Pokemon going for a Protect. You can lock it into that Protect for pretty much ever. <laughs> So that's really, really cool. Uh, you could also run like a Giga Drain or Energy Ball on it if you felt like it, or even run Taunt to prevent opposing Tailwinds or Trick Rooms. So yeah, Whimsicott just overall really nice Grass Fairy type, supports the team extremely well. That Tailwind will allow you to outspeed more Pokemon, and if you end up in a Speed type versus uh, opposing Sand Rush, then you'll be perfectly fine. Next up, we have Dragapult. Dragapult is just, it just fits the bill. It's a hyper offensive Pokemon with, um, great special well okay special attack but you know with that speed it's great special attack because it's going to outspeed everything uh infiltrator allows you to bypass things like light screen but you could also run a clear body set to prevent things like snarl from lowering your special attack stat or even i don't know something that'll lower your speed like icy wind uh that won't be able to happen draco meteor is very very powerful coming out from choice specs dragapult Shadow Ball will be able to hit Ghost types as well as Psychic types. They don't really give you too many issues, but I know Dusclops can wall Excadrill like pretty much forever and even burn it. Flamethrower is nice for uh, hitting those Grass types that I mentioned earlier, especially Ferrothorn. And if you don't have a Fire type in your team, Dragapult makes a nice substitute. Thunderbolt is nice for hitting those Water types that will give you issues as well. Dracovish is another hyper offensive Dragon type. Uh, this one is actually a Water type though. So with that Choice Scarf, Ficious Rend, it's going to do what we all know it does. Doubles in power, it gets Stab, it gets the Strong Jaw Boost, 170 base power times 2. We're hitting 340 power, that's all this thing does. Being a hyper offensive monster means that uh, it fits very well onto the Sand teams. And even if maybe you want to run a Sand Rush one once that ability comes out, that could work. However, I feel like the Choice Scarf set is the most optimal for this build. Uh, but yeah, Grimmsnarl, a very, very good Pokemon, much like... Whimsicott, it's got Prankster, but it's much more bulk oriented than Whimsicott. You have access to things like Fake Out, Reflect, Light Screen, and Thunder Wave. Um, all those are very annoying to your opponent. Thunder Wave stops your opponent from, you know, outspeeding you, which is really, really nice on Sand Teams. Uh, reflect and Light Screen will increase your longevity on your Pokemon, making it so you take hits much better, especially on those Weakness Policy x sets. You're going to appreciate that a lot. Uh, and Play Rough is nice for hitting opposing Dragon types like Dracovish or Dragapult, which can, in some situations, outspeed your Excadrill, especially if your Sand goes away. So that's really, really nice. Next up, we have Braviary and Past Simeon, and they both kind of fill the same role. Uh, the reason that Braviary is so good for this team is because it's a Tailwind setter that also discourages Intimidates. Intimidate is so important to beating Excadrill uh, because it'll lower that attack and make it harder for your Excadrill to to or make it harder for the Excadrill to get important knockouts. Uh, so if you have a way of discouraging them from wanting to bring Intimidate, from wanting them to bring Arcanine or Hitmontop or Scrafty or Mawile if they're insane, 
uh, that's really, really good because they're going to be scared of the Braviary getting that attack boost from the Intimidate and the Defiant and just w absolutely just wiping the floor with their team. Access to things like Brave Bird and Close Combat mean that Grass types aren't an issue. You'll be able to hit bulky Water types as well since most of them aren't resisting Brave Bird. And Close Combat is nice for hitting opposing Steel types, especially at plus one. Uh, and now that it has close combat instead of superpower, you won't be lowering your defense in your attack every time you use it. You're just lowering your defensive stats. Choice Scarf Passimian is another pretty decent option. It would really just be like a jolly max speed set. Rock Slide is nice for outspeeding your opponent and getting more flinches. Close combat is great for hitting things like Ferrothorn, opposing rock types. You can even beat Excadrill on the lead with it. Iron Head is just a nice way of hitting fairy types as well as opposing rock types, um, and you even a chance to flinch there. And Gunk Shot is great for hitting fairies. Uh, well, not great. I mean, it can KO pretty much every fairy that you're going to see. However, it's only got 80 accuracy, so use it with caution. So yeah, uh, with all those three, or with all those four out of the way, uh, I can finally get into the sand team that I built for you guys to try out. The pace spin to the sand team will be in the description down below. This is a bulky weakness policy extra drill sand team i'm running a very defensive grim snarl this thing's able to take a vicious rend from jolly what's it called from jolly dracovish um after getting the reflect up it also does a lot of damage back with play rough so with light screen reflect it's going to be easier for your extra drill and tyrannosaur to eat those hits uh fake out is really nice for just stopping I don't know, a uh, Tailwind from a Whimsicott, because it's very rare for Whimsicott to want to go for uh, Dynamax turn one. You can fake them out and, you know, get a free hit off if you want to just completely remove them from the field, stop them from outspeeding you the next turn. So that's a, just a really nice Pokemon. Uh, Excadrill is the weakness policy set that I showed you before. Nothing too special here. When you pair it with Grimmsnarl and a Dynamax, it's very easy for it to take hits and get its weakness policy off. I'm running a Lumberry Jolly Dragon Dance Tyranitar. Once again, it makes it very easy for this thing to set up with the light clay making the light screens and reflect stand even longer. And the Lumberry prevents a burn from hindering us once per game. So we pretty much get a free Dragon Dance every game, which is really, really nice. Along with that Sandstream will boost Excadrill speed, obviously. Standard Choice Scarf Dracovish, Vicious Rend, Rock Slide, Iron Head, and Crunch. Um, I don't really have to explain it. Hyper Offense makes it really easy for it to uh, thrive in this metagame. And we have a Rotom Heat here. It's going to allow me to hit things like Ferrothorn pretty easily. Citrus Berry, Volt Switch, Will-O-Wisp, Overheat Protect. It also can come in on Arcanine and just eat a Flare Blitz for Exudural if I need it to. Uh, and it can Volt Switch right out if the Arcanine decides to switch. I'll be able to get some momentum there. Finally, we have Braviary. This is an Aguadberry set with Defiant, Brave Bird, Tailwind, Protecting Close Combat, Max Speed, Jolly, and Max Attack. That is going to discourage Intimidates from hitting my team, and it's going to be an absolute beast if they decide to challenge me with those. So, I have a couple of replays for you guys here. Um, it was very hard for me to find like decent games on low ladder. I didn't want to use this team on my high ladder account because I'm currently testing a different one. So I'm going to show you guys all three of these replays, or maybe just two of them, I don't know. Um, I'll show you the more interesting ones, I'll, I'll do that. So I'd say the most interesting ones would have to be, uh, I believe, this one. This one with the Corviknight, I'll get out of the way first. So, my opponent ends up leading Araquanid and Obstagoon, and my thought process here is like, okay, I can get a Reflect up for free, Dynamax, and go for my max rock fall, KOing the Araquanid, and that'll make it much easier for me to take a possible fighting type move from the Obstagoon, as well as a water type move from Araquanid in case it does manage to live. So let's go ahead and play this. Um, I go for my Dynamax. He goes for an Obstruct, so I make the call correctly. I go for my Rax rock fall, and that is going to KO it. I get my sand up, meaning I'm twice as fast now, and the Obstagoon is going to get that burn. However, once I go for my max steel spike, I get that 1.5 defense. Behind the reflect in the Dynamax, that Brick Break is doing nothing. However, the Brick Break is removing my reflect, and I'm now getting my weakness policy up. Play Rough is going to absolutely destroy that Obstagoon, and my Excadrill is now in a position to sweep, barring the Corviknight. Um, max steel spike is just going to KO that Alchemy. And at this point, the game turns into a stall fest. 
I have no way of okoing this Corviknight once it decides to go for a Dynamax and it's very threatening to Dracovish. So I'm gonna turn on hyper fast mode and we're just gonna go through these turns as fast as I can. It's really just me playing around this Corviknight's roosts. Um, I was I kept missing rock slides, which is really, really annoying. That's the one thing about sand teams you need to remember. Rock slide is not perfectly accurate, so you can't rely on it 100% of the time. But as you can see, I do end up winning the War of Attrition after a little while. Not even after a little while. This takes forever. Corviknight just wants to roost up. Eventually, the Corviknight will run out of roost. It only has 16, so I can win. Um, but I end up making a very nice play here. I go into my Grim Snarl, go for the Fake Out, set up another Dragon Dance in its face, and get a Reflect off. And now I'm at max attack, so I can just go for crunches and stuff. And the Corviknight ends up dropping after this next one. So yeah, that team was very annoying to face. Uh, the next one is this one. I'll go with this one. This was like a very low ladder game. I don't really think it's great for showcasing the team. So let's go ahead and play this one. They decided to lead off with Milotic and Braviary. I was hoping them uh, to lead with Arcanine so I could get a boost on my Braviary. But this replay is just really great for showcasing how scary uh, Dynamax Braviary can be. So the Tailwind goes off. And at this point... I just say I, I want to go for the fake out in the max knuckle. I can get plus one and then next turn go for my max airstream and just KO this Milotic. They decide to Dynamax though, and regardless of that, uh, they go for the Brave Bird and they get a decent amount of damage off. Max Geyser does pretty much nothing behind my light screen, so I feel confident that I can just switch in my Tyranitar and get my sand up, preventing the Max Geyser from doing too much next turn. So Tyranitar comes in, but they go for Max Guard and they crit a Brave Bird, which is very annoying to me. So that's, that's a little bit, you know, discouraging to me. However, I can bring in Excadrill. I should be faster than both things on this team. The Arcanine's Intimidate is going to be a little bit annoying. I go for my Stomping Tantrum and get a crit. And behind that light screen, Tyranitar takes pretty much nothing from a Max Geyser. That is disgusting. It's the light screen plus the sand. So that's just such a great combination. Uh, I do get my Stomping Tantrum off and my Dragon Dance for free. Uh, at this point, I can go for a Rock Slide to KO the Milotic and do pretty good damage to the Arcanine. I do about half to the Arcanine. I'm not fearing a Will-O-Wisp. However, they will be able to knock me out with close combat. They're going to lose their defense on the Arcanine. And it's now a 3-2 to two game. They send out their Dracovish. However, I go for a Reflect here and a Rock Slide is going to do some pretty decent damage to Dracovish and the Braviary. They go for their Tailwind. And I make a very good play here. I protect my Excadrill recognizing that the Dracovish is going to be very, very dangerous to me. And I go for the player off getting the KO. The crit didn't matter there. Grimstar has enough attack to Oko that thing. The Intimidate is going to be a little bit annoying. However, behind my Reflex, x is going to be able to take some hits. And I can go for the player off into this Braviary this next turn, uh, KOing it. And at this point, with the Reflex up, Grimstar is going to be able to 1v1 the Arcanine, barring I don't miss all my player offs. I do, however, miss the first one, which... You know, that, that, that could be a little bit annoying if they got a crit the next turn. Close combat will not knock me out, and I do end up winning the game with this next play rough. So, that's just a nice showcase as to how sand offense works. Uh, I built a bit of a bulkier sand offense team for you guys to try out. Uh, you know, on low ladder, it's very hard to find games that represent how you're going to face them in tournament, how you're going to use the team in tournament. Um, so, that, that was a little bit of an awkward replay. But I hope you guys understood the gist of the team. If you guys want to let me know what you guys think about the team in the comment section down below, I'd really appreciate it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, links to everything in the description down below. I have a Twitch, a Discord, a Twitter. Go ahead and follow me on all those. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you once again for 6,000 subscribers. I have a surprise for you guys coming up in this weekend. Uh, I'll be giving away hidden ability Pokemon. I'll be giving away hidden ability in DD and a couple of other Pokemon. I'll announce all the details in the community tab in my Discord very soon. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.